Hi guys, I thought I'd do something a little different today. I figured it's a nice day and I'm outside. Let's record a video um, with the camera rather than just doing, uh, what's it called, screen, screenshot, screen capture. So I thought we'd talk a bit about highs and I'm going to go through some of the features that I think make highs really worthwhile. And I'm actually gonna do some direct comparisons with contact and I'll just tell you why I think highs is better in, in most circumstances. So, if you can hear me over the dogs panting, um, highs is, uh, in my opinion, better than contact, but there are some things that contact can do that highs can't do. So, for example, if you're doing anything that uses time stretching or beat mapping, then, or slicing, uh, those kind of things, then you're going to want to use contact because currently highs doesn't have any time stretching capabilities. But that's probably going to change in the future. Also, in highs, you can't have you can't reference the same sample in multiple places but have it start at different points. So what I mean is if you take your sustain sample and put it into a group uh, in highs and set its start position at the beginning of the sample so you play the full sustain and then also want to use the same sample but start it near the end as a release trigger, you can't do that in highs because it just uses a single reference. So it'll just see the one sample and it'll start it always at the latest start date that you've set. Start time that you've set. So contact wins on that one but that's currently being changed um, the developer of highs Christoph he's uh, actually I was looking in the github re repo the other day and uh, that seems to be something that he's currently working on with highs you can export your library straight to a VST plugin or a standalone application which will run on uh, Mac Windows or Linux but there's a catch if you want to export it to run on a Mac you have to have a Mac and a Apple developer ID if you want it to run on Windows, you have to have a Windows machine. If you want to have it run on Linux, you have to have a Linux machine. Uh, that's the only downside, really. You also have to set up a compiler, but once you've done that, and it's not that difficult, once you've done it, you, you don't have to do it again. You can just use the same setup for uh, all your libraries. The good thing about having a VST is you just give it to your user and they can run it in their uh, DAW, and um, there's no need for them to have extra software like the full version of Contact or Contact Player or anything like that. And with highs, you can also export to an iOS app. Can't do Android yet, but maybe that'll happen in the future. So those are kind of the areas where there's um, where highs and uh, contact where where you're going to make your choice about those about which platform to go with. But this is where I want to talk about just why I think highs is better than contact. I think it's good that you can export directly to a VST then you're not tied into any ecosystem. I think that's the term they like to use to describe uh, uh, being reliant on a single developer. So you're not reliant on native instruments to keep making versions of contact and to keep adding features and you don't have to rely on them to improve the software. Uh, your library will always work assuming the VST standard is supported by the host. So as a developer, and this is really only as a developer we're talking, uh, these are my reasons why Highs is better. And the, reasons that I say, and the reason I say it as a developer is because Highs isn't a, an end user product. It's not like Contact where you can make libraries in it and the end user can use it. It's just a tool for making a VST. So it's a developer's tool, not a user's tool. So number one reason why Highs is better than Contact from a developer's point of view is sample mapping. In contact, you can drag in, I think it's 127 samples at a time. They might have changed that in a recent version. Um, and you can map them with some limited uh, settings and some limited auto map options, which once upon a time we thought were very sophisticated. Uh, but if you've used the auto mapper in highs, you'll know that contact is not very, um, I'm trying to think how to word it politely. It's not as good. It's not as sophisticated. Highs is much better for mapping samples. You can map thousands of samples in one go, to, and the choices you have for the auto mapping is it's just huge. I mean, you've got to try it out, and I'll do some videos on that at some point. Tight, come here. Okay, multi mic samples. In contact, there is no such thing as multiple mic positions. Contact was developed uh, quite a while ago, and multi mic sampling and multi-mic instruments weren't really a thing back then and they haven't 
really caught up with it. They've just sort of said, okay, we can work with multi mics in the current system, so let's not bother making it any easier. So in highs, you actually have it actually has a concept of multiple mic positions. So the paradigm in highs is so different to contact. This is kind of uh, difficult to explain, but if you're used to contact and you want three mic positions, uh, you've recorded three mic positions, you'll create three groups and in each group you'll have one set of samples from one microphone. So you might have close, decker, wide mics. And those being three groups. And anything you want to do in your script to one group, you have to do to all three. In highs you don't do that, you just say, take these samples, my multi-mic samples, and apply the same thing to all of them. But then when you want to split them out and do individual things like purging, you can do. So highs gives us the best of both worlds and it's really easy to do and there's built-in tools for it. So speaking of built-in tools, Highs has a really good uh, auto trimming tool, which means you don't have to cut your samples as accurately in the cutting and editing stage. You can import them into Highs with a bit of extra at the beginning, a bit of extra at the end, press the auto trim and set up some settings and it will trim your samples. And I find it to be really accurate. And now I just, I'm very lazy about cutting my samples, but it means that when I'm editing and cutting, I can do it much more quickly because I don't have to get it exactly on the start of the sample, I can do that in highs. And what I've always done in the past in contact is pulled my samples slightly back from the start anyway, so I have some wiggle room um, for adjustment and obviously I return that in highs, but I, on, on the ones where I don't need the wiggle room it'll cut it uh, pretty accurately and all I do is I just review the samples afterwards and make sure they're all correct and make any slight adjustments I need to. Okay, another big one for me is the vector graphics. In contact, your only way of adding graphics to your interface is to load in uh, bitmap images, usually in PNG format, and uh, they don't scale very nicely. Uh, not that you have any scaling options in contact anyway, but if you were to stretch those images to make them bigger for a bigger uh, monitor, they, because they're uh, bitmap raster images, they will uh, sort of pixelate and blur as the stretched or um, they'll lose detail as the compressed. In highs, you can still load in your uh, standard bitmap images. So you could take, stopping the dog nibbling himself, doesn't like the heat. So um, you can still load in like your graphics that you use in your contact libraries, if you want. Or you can come to the future and use vector graphics. Rather than being pixel based, they're based on mathematical formulas. Um, so everything is really precise and if you stretch it, it just uh, adjusts the, um, the maths and it stretches perfectly with no pixelation or blurring or anything like that. So you can make um, interfaces in highs that will scale really nicely to different size monitors and you can actually change the size of an interface in highs as well. There's options so you can double it or uh, I think you can half it as well. You, you, there's some adjustment options there as well. So people with different size monitors can have a different size interface using the same graphics and it'll stretch. And you don't even need to use external graphics files for the vectors. You can draw straight into uh, highs on, on to, uh, like a canvas. Uh, if you've done any HTML drawing on the canvas, it's very similar. Bless you. So uh, I'll do videos on this as well, but uh, the vector graphics is a feature I really love and in fact all my instruments I'm making in highs don't use any images, it's all vectors. Uh, even for little buttons and custom shapes and things I'm just loading in vectors. Um, you can load, you can design a vector uh, graphic in something like Inkscape or Illustrator and you can actually import that into highs as well as uh, a data set that can, uh, I'm making it sound more complicated, but it's really easy, uh, as a data set that can then scale like any other vector graphic. And I'll, I'll do a, a one of those um, screen casting videos uh, showing all this because it's the kind of thing you've really got to see if, if you're not familiar with it. Alright, well we've got to get walking, so let's do a walk and talk. How's that for a selfie stick? Okay, so I'm going to do a little walk and talk just to finish off this video. So those are kind of the main features that I really like about highs and that make it stand out from contact, but there are loads more and I'll do more videos covering them. There's just so much to cover. I mean, highs is totally different to contact once you get into it. And this actually puts some people off and it put me off for a while, but oh, stepping on the dog. But once you get into it and you spend some time with it, you'll see it's so much better than contact, so much easier to use. Uh, like I say, there are a few limitations, 
but if they don't affect your instrument, and it really is only the time stretching that's the biggie, if they, if they don't affect what you're doing, then it's not something to worry about, just use highs. So before I sign off, one last feature, well, it's kind of a feature of highs, one thing that's very important to me, um, and one reason, just stepping through an incredibly spiky bush. Come on, dog. You all right? Look at that. And, uh, come on. Ow. I don't think we came this way last time. Oh, sorry, lad. That's not gonna work, is it? I wanna lift him over it. Come in, boy. Let's get you all that. So one last, one last part of highs, which is, go on Tyke, you can do it, this way. So one last note about highs, which is really important for me, is highs is what's known as free software. It doesn't mean free as in price, although it is free as in price, it means free as in it respects your freedom. So it's open source and it's under a GPL license and if you don't know what that means you should look up the GPL license and look up the Free Software Foundation as well and find out all about it. Alright guys, I'm going to sign off for this video now and try and find my way back out of this jungle and I'll catch you next time.